Everybody, this is Perch. Um, I got a lot of response to a video I posted uh, a while back about religion. Um, and I've done videos on religion before, but there was one about uh, about a week ago. It depends on when this is posted, of course. But but a little rec in the recent past, there was a video about religion and comics. And the responses I've got back are, are uh, nice. They're they're good. They're they're puzzling in the sense that they're uh, that people are surprised that I took a um, you know tried to take an understanding view of the whole topic. And it, what it highlighted for me is, is kind of, you know, reading some of the responses and, and listening to it is there's a lesson here to some extent for, you know, everyone, for creators, for publishers, for, for all kinds of people about how you could, uh, you know, just a little bit of just listening and trying to understand what people are saying goes a huge way. People are not used to it. I mean, I think that's the sad part is, is that in comics, well, in, in everything in general, People are not used to understanding. If uh, I saw an article uh, this morning where somebody was saying, you know, calling it the uh, the pandemic of the unvaccinated was probably not the best uh, way to reach out to unvaccinated people to encourage them to to get the vaccine. It probably had the opposite effect. It's like, <laughs> what you think? Um, it's I, I, the the crazy part is that consistently, and I had the same feeling, by the way, with, uh, with Mayor Goodboy. I was talking with Joe, and it's like you could see the fact that Mayor Goodboy, that graphic novel, was going to do well. Um, you could see it coming from a mile away. It, it, was, it was obvious it was going to do well. It's like cutesy, appeals people, simple concept, fun dog, lighthearted stuff. Yeah, that, aimed at kids. Of course, of course that's going to sell incredibly well. Looks fun, and it was. And uh, But... It was <laughs> all these people like, I'm surprised this book did well. Then you're in the wrong job. If you're a comic editor, if you're a publisher and you're surprised that 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 book sold incredibly well, you're, you're not in the right job. You, you're, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Same thing with kind of some of these pandemic comments and same thing with uh, this th this topic of religion. I mean, look, no matter how you feel about religion, pro, con, you, you go to church uh, every week. Or you don't go to church, but you, you hold these beliefs, this faith close in your heart. Or, you know, you've walked away from it entirely. Or you had such a, a bad experience with religion. There are those people out there that they, you know, want no part of it. They swear it off. Regardless of where you are on that spectrum, uh, basic understanding, meaning I don't, I, you know, I don't need to feel the way these other people feel, but I'm, I, you know, if they have a story to tell, I'm going to listen to it. And if, uh, you know, it, what they do really doesn't impact me. So, you know, just it's it's a live and let live kind of feeling. But it's, I think we, we, right now you're seeing so many comments and so much push from everyone, from creators, from retailers, from publishers around, uh, you know, we got to grow comics. How do we make this industry strong and stable? Well, make it larger, grow it, bring more people in, have more people to party. Everybody wants this. By the way, even every I don't I, I rarely meet somebody, very rarely, that says I want to keep people out of comics. When people do make those comments, they don't really mean it. What they mean is they want to keep the like the the lunatics out. They want to they want to keep people who are there to do harm. Okay, but generally speaking, everybody wants more people in comics. Everybody wants more people to chat with at the comic shop. Nobody is looking for 100% compliance of ideas, that's not technically true. But but by and large, most people want just, just they want other people in here. The, the dangerous people are the people around the edge, the people who do want to do it harm, the people who cannot tolerate, you know, somebody having a different idea. By the way, when I say that, I'm thinking about somebody who, you know, it's like Hulk versus Superman, who would win? There's people there who definitely believe Hulk, there's people who definitely believe Superman, and, uh, you know, but the people who believe Superman don't want the people who believe Hulk excluded from comics. That's absurd. That's that's what I was talking about. Yes, there are people who are like, I want to read a particular type of comic and I'm so insecure about my feelings on the comics I enjoy that if somebody says they don't like it, I want them banned from comics. There, there are those people out there. And that's that extreme fringe of, of craziness that, that 
that does not help. But back to the kind of the main topic at hand. Um, there's a lesson in here for, for publishers, for creators, for, for everybody that, you know, I, I mentioned in that video, I'm not religious, um, but I respect people who are. Um, my respect for them has nothing to do with the religion. It has to do with the fact that, you know, if somebody has these closely held beliefs, if somebody is willing to kind of try and do good for others. And I know that, that lots of people have used religion to do, you know, bad things. Uh, but the core tenets of religion, whatever that religion is, is, is to, you know, do good by people. That's, that's kind of the, the point. Um, yeah, absolutely. People violate that point. I would argue those people are, are fake religious are not good at, <laughs> at their religion if they're using it to harm others. Um, uh, but, but I can align on it. Yeah. I don't need to, I don't need to go in on the religion in order to support the people. And if somebody wants to tell me that story and if somebody wants to, uh, you know, it come into a shop and they say, you know, this stuff makes me uncomfortable and, I would prefer to have, uh, you know, or, you know, I, but if I want this type of comic and not this type of comic. I mean, as a retailer, it's my job to give it to them, to figure out a way to get them what they want. Um, it's not my job to sit there and argue with them about comics that make them feel uncomfortable. I had people come into my shop who uh, thought that Ghost Rider was a satanic evil character and, and it made them uncomfortable. Now, a couple of them would say, I want, you know, you should pull that from the shelves. And I actually did have a, a small group of but once I've only experienced it one time in my career, a uh, small group of people show up with signs and say, you know, this, this shop is, is uh, perpetrating Satan. And they were talking about things like ghost rider and spawn and, and venom, anything that looked like scully and creepy and all that kind of stuff was, was bad. Ironically, by the way, these, these people always gravitate toward the ghost writers and the stuff like that. And they miss, you know, things like, uh, you know, like nobody's going in, like they, they ignore Doom Patrol. <laughs> and meanwhile, like Grant Morrison is gleefully like tearing down parts of religion. It's, it's funny. They, you know, a skull will bait you anytime. Uh, but, but by and large, I, I would, I would say 95% of the time or more, the people coming in who are uncomfortable with the, with Ghost Rider, um, you know, they, their, their answer to this, is they just don't buy it and they don't want me to, laugh at them for their beliefs. And that's fair. I, I, you know, I, they, I'm to respect them. I don't have to re agree with them to respect what they're saying. So when people came in, it's like, Oh, I don't really like that. I'm like, Oh, well maybe here's something else you'll like over here. And they buy it and they leave happy. Uh, there's a choice I'm making. I can say, Hey, you know, no problem. You've taught me, you told me something about yourself. Let me now uh, try and get you something that, that you like. Or I can sit there and I can uh, yell at them for how dumb I think their ideas are and, and lose a sale and gain an enemy in that process. And that, that's stupid. And that, to me, is where if you look at a lot of the dialogue right now, uh, just all over in the world, but certainly within comics, there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of, I can't. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm bad somehow unless I yell at you. It's, this is the fallacy of the Antifa punch a Nazi kind of thing. You know, first of all, you know, Starbucks is not a Nazi. And so when you're in a street and you throw a, you know, a trash can through the Starbucks window, you're not punching a Nazi. You're throwing a garbage can through the window of Starbucks. Unless you have evidence that Starbucks is a secret, uh, you know, Nazi headquarters, you're, you're not doing what you say you're doing. But overall, um, you can you can treat somebody with respect and not agree with them. It is possible. In fact, it, it, it sounds pretty ridiculous to even say those those words coming out of my mouth right now in 2022. But here we are. I think that if a lot of creators and there's a lot of creators increasingly who are listening to this show, um, and I know you know some of the guys out there who blocked a lot have recently come over, and I, I put out way too many videos, so the odds of them listening to this is is zero. And and granted, as people say in the comments, uh, I doubt I change anybody's heart and mind through any of this. But my but, but just consider for a moment whether I can appeal to you in your own best interest. It's in your own best interest to have more people buying comics. This is going to create job security for you, so I can appeal to you that way. I can also appeal to you as a, just be a, being a good human being, being a good human being means you don't always 
jump in with your fists raised at every situation. Sometimes the right thing to do is to say, I don't agree with you, but you know what? Um, as long as, uh, as long as you're not going to force me to, to take on your beliefs, I'm, I'm going to let, you know, live and let live. I'm going to, you, you can believe that I'm going to believe this. We're going to go our separate ways. That's reasonable as a retailer. Um, again, I have the choice of, I guess, three choices. When somebody comes in and says that ghostwriter cover is a product of Satan, I can say, all right, oh God, I'll take it all down. I'll take it all down. In which case I'm blocking somebody else from getting what they want. Or I can say, get out of this store, you, you weirdo, get out. I'm selling what I want to sell. I can make it about me. Okay. Now I don't get that. I don't get their, their money. And probably there's a lot of silent people in the store watching this thinking, wow, that guy's a crazy person. Meaning me or both of us, <laughs> frankly, it's, it's harmful. Or you have that third path of saying, well, sorry, you don't like that, but here's something over here. Why don't you, why don't you look at this? This is something you might like. That third path is where more comic stuff, more comic people, you, that's where you need to get to. You don't, by, by recommending something else, it doesn't mean you're quietly supporting, you know, uh, Satanism or your score doesn't mean you're quietly supporting censorship. Now I've used this analogy before and I've had the kind of usual suspects. And to me, look, the reality is it's people who want to fight. It's people who are not being honest about their intentions, but they'll say something like, well, that's a straw man argument. That's not real. What about the people who are online harassing others? What about the people who are online issuing death threats and just the entire litany of stuff that we hear all the time? And the answer to that is, is also pretty simple. Condemn death threats, of course. Uh, so harassment of somebody when it's happening is wrong. Yes. That doesn't mean you proactively need to go out there and try and police the world. It means when you see those behaviors, you say, I don't agree. You make sure you're not doing those behaviors yourself. A lot of people who scream about harassment do a hell of a lot of harassing. It's, it's the same thing. You want to grow the audience. Some understanding matters. I'm glad that there was a good reaction to the religious video. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that people got something out of it. The, as I mentioned, the surprise and or sadness in all of it is that it was surprising to people. Somebody just saying, hey, let's uh, try and understand this together. We, I, I, we all need to work very hard to make that not the abnormality, to make that not the, the surprising aspect. And again, because that makes us good people, because pragmatically we need to sell more comics and we need to build up this industry. Uh, and because, you know, here's the other thing. For the 2% of people on Twitter who will hit the like button or clap back when, you know, you, you really nail somebody, the 98% are just looking at you like a jackass. They're silent. And you don't know they're there. But I guarantee you, because um, I've heard so many people, I didn't used to. In the last, I don't know, year and a half, it's, it's come up more, both in, in retailer groups. Um, again, not from angry trolls online, but just normal people who are wanting to buy comics. People in the shop. They're like, oh yeah, that, uh, that Dan Slot guy is kind of a prick online. And... Is that, is that really the legacy you want? The amount of people who now know about the Tom King, Jay Lee story, who's like, yeah, Tom King guy, he, uh, he's a real asshole to, to Jay Lee and his dog died. And, you know, he, uh, Jay Lee has some, some tough things going on and he's kicking him while he was down. What a, what a jerk. Is that, is that what you want? I mean, why would you want that in your life? Why would you want people saying that? But that's, that's the 98% out there who are not your pals, not to, you know, say Mitch Gerards who, who, you know, likes everything Tom King does or, you know, the big Tom King faithful fans who will come on Twitter and, and thumbs up and like things. Why, why would you want that for yourself? Why would you want a bunch of people who just think you're a dick? Seems, uh, seems wasteful. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and thank you very much always for understanding.